Are you ready to take control of your credit card debt? I've got some easy tips for you to do it. Welcome to Gary Talks Money, the finance channel without the gimmicks. My name is Gary, and today we're going to jump into part three of my four-part series about paying off credit card debt. If you're new around here, this is actually video number three in a larger four-part series I'm doing on credit card debt. In the previous video, we covered steps four through six in the debt payoff process, and today we're going to cover the next three. If you haven't already seen the first two videos, I definitely recommend checking them out. I'll have a link to a playlist up there and down in the description below. If you're interested in following along with this series, I've actually put together an easy 12-step debt payoff worksheet that covers all the information I'm going to be talking about in these videos. The worksheet is totally free and it's available on my website. If you want to check it out, a link will be in the description below. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the next three steps. All right, once again, welcome to the four-part series on credit card debt payoff. We have made it to video number three out of four, and so far we have covered steps number one through six. Today, we're gonna to be covering steps seven through nine in the debt payoff process. But first, I would like to quickly recap the three steps that we talked about in our last video. In our last video, we began with step number four, which was called define your repayment scope. And if you remember, what we did is we took a better look at all of the types of debt that we had and we focused down on the type of debt that we wanted to specifically repay. Once we narrowed our focus down and we selected the exact types of debt that we wanted to pay off, we could move on to step number five in the payoff process, which was called pick a payoff strategy. Now, if you recall, we covered three distinct separate payoff strategies that you could use for your payoff process. Those three strategies were the debt snowball method, the avalanche method, and the debt consolidation method. Now, if you'll recall, the debt snowball method actually focused on paying off debts smallest to largest, whereas the avalanche method was the exact opposite, focusing on paying off debts largest to smallest. You'll also remember that the debt consolidation method, the third method that we covered in our last video, was the most different of the three. The debt consolidation method actually focused on refinancing all of your credit card debt into a single loan with a lower monthly payment and interest rate. Once we were able to take a look at those three debt payoff methods and pick the best one for our scenario, we could move on to step number six in the debt payoff process, which was project a payoff date. Of course, step number six focused on looking at the amount of money that we were going to be paying back monthly, looking at our total amount of debt, dividing it out, and calculating an approximate payoff date to give us a little bit of an idea when this process would be done. Now that we got that brief recap of steps number four through six out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to steps number seven through nine in this debt payoff process, beginning with step number seven. Step number seven is called switch to a cash only spending model. And this is a super self-explanatory step. If we take a look at this step at face value, you will quickly understand that this step is all about spending cash rather than utilizing credit. So instead of financing our lifestyle through credit cards, personal loans, or other buy now, pay later type loans, we're going to be using cash exclusively. So the very first thing in this step is we need to stop using our credit cards to make everyday purchases. And the thing that you wanna remember is that even small additions to your credit card debt are going to add up and make repayment so much more difficult. What I want you to do is I want you to switch to a cash only or debit only spending model. And what that means is I don't want you to use your credit cards for your day-to-day -day purchases. I want you to use a debit card that is linked directly to your checking account instead. Now, in order for this to work, I want you to make sure that you've got enough money budgeted for things like food, gas, and essentials. Now, while I do discourage you from using your credit card during this period, if you absolutely do need to make a purchase on your credit card, maybe you feel more comfortable making a purchase on your credit card rather than your debit card, 
what I want you to do is I want you to repay that debt immediately. So if you do end up using your credit card, I want you to treat it exactly like a debit card. I want you to make sure that you have the funds in your bank account ahead of time before you swipe that card or you put that chip into the card machine. I want you to make sure that you have the money on hand so that as soon as that purchase clears and it's on the books for your credit card, that you're able to go to your bank account and pay it off. Now this is very, very important. I do not want you to wait until the next billing cycle or the next statement to come in the mail for you to pay off that debt that you just put on the card. I want you to pay that debt off immediately because it is so easy for you to stack debt on top of debt on top of debt. And within 20 or 30 days of spending, you could have an out of control spending situation. Whereas if you're paying off those debts immediately after using your credit card, you will be able to keep track of it much better and you'll have a much better handle on the situation. While it is not ideal to use a credit card during this debt payoff process, and I don't recommend it, if you are going to use one, what I want you to do is to aim for a net zero spending amount at the end of each month. What does that mean? What that means is I want your payment that's going in to exactly match the amount that you've spent every single month. So if you spent $275 on your credit card, you should be paying off $275 every single month. Now, if your traditional electronic budgeting techniques and methods are not working for you, you may want to consider using a more physical budgeting method called the envelope system. Basically, what the envelope system does is it allocates the amount of money that you're going to need each week or each month into specific envelopes. So, for instance, you could have a grocery envelope with your grocery money in that envelope. You could have your electricity bill and you could have the money for the electricity bill in that envelope and so on and so forth. Now, the whole idea of the envelope system is that you limit yourself to spend only the amount of money that you have in the envelope for each specific category. This can help prevent overspending, and it is a very helpful budgeting tool for people who like to have something tangible in front of them. While the envelope system doesn't work for everybody, it is a very helpful, tangible tool that you can use if you're using this cash-only spending model. All right, now that we covered step number seven, let's go ahead and move on to step number eight, which is called begin saving money. Step number eight is a vital step in the payoff process. And I know that I keep saying that these steps are important, but step number eight is critical because if we don't save money, we will not be able to pay off our credit card debt. Full stop, if you don't save money, you will not be paying off your credit card debt. So in this step, what I want you to do is I want you to begin saving money every single pay period and devoting that money to debt repayment. What I want you to do is I want you to save any money that's left over after your monthly expenses are covered. Make sure that all of your bills are paid and make sure that you're comfortable and you have a little bit of margin just in case something comes up, but any leftover money that you have, that immediately needs to go in your savings account. Now, any kind of extra money that you have coming in, that's going to be things like bonuses from work, a tax refund, or any kind of monetary gifts. You're going to immediately set that money aside and put that in your savings account. That's going to be part of your debt payoff fund. Now, ideally, you should try to put your money in some sort of high yield savings account so that you're earning interest during this period of time that you're saving up. Check with your local bank or credit union and see what types of savings accounts they offer. Especially now with interest rates as high as they are, you may be able to get a high yield savings account with a three and a half, four, or even four and a half percent interest rate. And that's an excellent place to stash your money while you're saving towards that payoff. Now this is very, very important. I want you to make sure that your savings account is completely separate from your other household expense accounts. So that could be a checking account, that could be another savings account that you might be putting money into. Those should be completely separate from the savings account that you're using to save up for your debt payoff. Another thing that is very, very important is that I do not want your debt payoff savings account to be connected in any way to a debit card. That is going to be a temptation that we just do not want to have right now as we're saving towards that debt payoff. Most banks and credit unions will allow you to set up an additional savings account very, very easily. You just want to make sure, like I said, not to set up a debit card connected to that account. 
Now the last and most important part of this step is I want you to commit to not touching the money in this debt payoff savings account until you are ready to start paying off your credit cards. The worst, most destructive thing that you can do for your debt payoff process is to go in there and interrupt the momentum that we've had so far and take away from that savings that we've built up. Now, if you go in there and you take money out of this savings account, it is just going to prolong the agony and the misery that we're in right now. So I know that it is a big temptation, but I want you to resist the urge to take money out of this account and just cordon it off set it aside and forget it until you're ready to pay off those credit cards. All right, now that we're saving up our money, we're working on step number eight, let's move on to step number nine, which is called incrementally pay off debt. Now this is a super exciting milestone step in this 12 step process and we are getting towards the end. We are definitely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Step number nine is all about incrementally paying off your debt. Now we're gonna be using step number eight and step number nine in conjunction with one another. We're gonna be saving up money in step number eight and we're gonna be paying off debt with that same money in step number nine. What I want you to do is I want you to use your chosen debt repayment strategy, whether that be your debt snowball method or the avalanche method or the debt consolidation method. I want you to use that debt repayment strategy as a guide. And I want you to begin incrementally paying off your debts from your monthly savings. Now this is totally up to you how you wanna do this. You may choose to pay off your debts all at one time in one big lump sum at the end, or you may want to pay it off in large chunks along the way. That could be a few hundred or a few thousand dollars at a time. That is totally up to you how you wanna do that. The only thing that I want you to remember is that the longer that you draw your debt out, the more you're going to be paying an interest. So it is in your best interest to pay off debt sooner rather than later, because the longer it sits there and it marinates, the more interest it's accruing and the more money you're gonna owe in the end. So use that debt repayment method as a guide, start paying off debt incrementally, and then you'll be in good shape for our next step, step number 10, which we're gonna be covering in our next video. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and following along on this four-part debt payoff series. I hope that this information has been helpful so far. Like I said, if you're interested in following along with the rest of this series, be sure to check out that debt payoff worksheet. It will, of course, be linked down in the description below. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments section. I will, of course, try to answer any questions that you guys have. Please check out my other videos that are going to be linked down in the description as well. Until next time, guys, take care, and I'll see you later.